Hey folks, welcome. We're in the final stages of setting up our flight today in South Africa. I thought we'd fly from King Shaka Airport on the eastern coast of the country, kind of the Indian Ocean, over to Cape Town, which is in the very south part of South Africa. And the reason I'm here in South America, or South Africa rather, is with the new Microsoft update, there's a lot been a lot of attention in Australia, which is fine. I took a flight in Australia not long ago, but I live in Minnesota, and mid-February, early March, many Minnesotans make an escape, get out of the winter doldrums, and uh, go to Arizona or California or somewhere warm. So why not go somewhere where the seasons are reversed? And here we are at King Shaka International. Pan American Airlines livery. Clipper Victory is the name of our craft. This is about the closest thing to an international livery that I own, even though I know Pan American has uh, had troubles. <laughs> In other words, they're, they don't exist anymore. <laughs> Actually, it, it's not quite true. There is a, a regional commuter in upstate New York who's adopted the name Pan American. It's kind of good, kind of good to see. Anyway, so let's uh, let's go fly, or at least get the process started. Here we are at gate number eleven. I'm going to use a couple of add-on programs to give us a little immersion. Live weather, live time. It's a little after 2, it's probably about 2.30 local time. First program is RAS Pro, which will add the automated runway environment to the simulation. And I'm not going to do anything with this, but just to minimize it on the default settings. The next program is Microsoft, I'm sorry, is is FS2 Cruise Pushback Express, which will give us a realistic ground crew and some pushback options. And as soon as I get Pushback Express installed, one thing I want to do is go ahead and attach the jet bridge. Now the jet bridge, most of the time the jet bridge has to do a little bit of maneuvering to get into position. This one is right on top of us. So it's not going to take a whole lot. You can see it's elevated a little bit from the aircraft. It'll have to drop down. I know there's a, a small light that comes on that illuminates the doorway as it's moving. And it'll also uh, trigger the opening of the left cabin door. So let's attach that jet bridge. Watch what happens. It happened pretty quick. Let's go around to the other side of the aircraft. I'm going to raise our view just a little bit so the camera doesn't knock into the side of that terminal. We spin around. Clipper Victory. A fine looking craft. <laughs> how about some external power? And how about getting the baggage process started? Let's hop aboard. Cold and dark. Let's see if our, my first officer, Christy, is with us today. Is she with us, Christy? There she is. She's going to go out and do her walk around in just a little bit. 
I want to start up that other program, which is uh, Fly-By-Wire uh, Push A320NX Crew, which will allow Christy and I to run some realistic procedures. Also, I want to fire up our air traffic control program called Pilot to ATC. And I'll also get SimBrief going. Okay, this is the last flight that I filed um, King Shaka Airport to Cape Town about a three hour flight I'm not gonna don't plan on keeping you folks around for all of it get up to the in route portion and I'll let you go and then come back just as it's time to set up for the descent so let's import the flight plan into Pilot to ATC, what we'll need is our departure airport, which is F-A-L-E, and then our procedures right here. We don't want the departure or the arrival, the uh, sit or the star. So I'm going to copy the guts, the middle portion, paste that in, and then at the end I want to put... F-A-C-T, which is our arrival, and import that. Oh, does it like that for some reason? I wonder why. F-A-L-E, F-A-C-T. <coughs> It should, I capitalized those uh, arrival departure should matter. And it did matter. Okay, now we're loaded. And let's add in our SID. We're going to force runway six for the time being, but if that changes, we'll come up here and change this. We're on the 2B1A with Tubin as the transition. You can see 2B1A and Tubin as a transition. We'll load that in. That's our departure. And our arrival will be, you can see the available arrivals. We're going to force runway one for right now. It'll be the uh, Getty 1A off the getting, getting flying. The getting flying transition. We'll load that in. Great, and let's push that off the side for right now. Minimize that. <coughs> when the first officer, when I start the, uh, the, uh, when I start the uh, crew program, the first officer, the first thing, first thing she's going to do is she's going to, we have external power available, she's going to hit the battery one and battery two switches. You'll hear the background electrical fans come on. She's going to come down here and turn on the nav lights, which she needs on to help her with her walk around. And she'll come up here to the APU fire test, and she'll hit that test button and do the... Uh, to the fire test on the APU. So let's see if that happens as we introduce ourselves to Christy. Let's start setting up. Okay.
Great. And that's all she'll do. She's getting ready to go out our walk around. Let's continue on. Here's the emergency exit light in the lower right corner. I'm going to, I'm sorry. Yes, emergency exit light. Flip this into the armed position. This light should extinguish. No smoking sign on. Seatbelt sign I'm on. I'm out for the walk around. We'll see you soon. Kick up the integrity lights. Wing light on. Landing lights off. Strobe lights off. Taxi lights off. I'm going to hold off on the crew oxygen supply. I'm going to turn on the ground control to auto. I'm going to listen very intently for the CVR test. And the first time you do this, you might not hear it. You kind of need to know what sound to listen to. It's, it's rather shallow. But this will be the CVR test. Listen if you can see if you can hear the sound. That's it. Kind of like taking an ear test. You know, you really got to listen for it. Turn off the ground control button. We'll go up to the inertia reference system, the ADIRS. We'll turn on ADIRS system number one to nav, number two to nav, and number three to nav. For right now, I'm going to leave the fuel pumps off. We've done an APU fire test. We'll do a test for smoke in the cargo area. That test is acceptable. And we'll do an enunciator light test. I'm going to turn on the enunciator lights into the test mode. And that'll turn on every bulb in the house. Every element. Every filament. Every bulb. We want to check and see if there's any bulbs that are not illuminated. This would be also a good chance to kick up our other rheostats. Get all the lights, even in the daytime. One of my pet peeves about Flight Simulator is that every time you start it, all these lights are down to their bottom setting. Just takes a couple little effort to get them all cranked up. Especially important on these displays. Couple over here. While the enunciator light test is going on, I'll take care of some things I probably should have taken care of before we even walked aboard the aircraft. I want to come back here and check all these circuit breakers are pushed in. All these upper circuit breakers are pushed in. We'll turn off the light up here. Check the level of the fire extinguisher back behind us. You can see that little fire extinguisher back there. It's kind of hard to see right there. We'll check the airworthiness certificate. We'll check the log books. We'll check the crash axe and the other safety equipment. I'll do an oxygen mask test on my side. There's also an oxygen mask Let's see if we can see it. It's behind the, uh, okay, here's, here's where you would look to see, oh, 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 yeah, can't, uh, and try to see those circuit breakers. I really don't have a view. There we go. Come right along the edge, right along the edge and check out those circuit breakers. Make sure they're all pushed in. Ah, okay. There's, okay, this is the view from the uh, jump seat. And there's a, there should be an oxygen mask back here for the jump seat passenger. That might be it right there, but you want to do a check on that oxygen mask as well. Actually, a couple of jump seats back here. <coughs> ah. There we go. 
try to get back to our normal. There, okay. <laughs> Took me a while to get back to our normal view. Okay, so every light in the house, every element, every filament, every LED portion illuminated all during the enunciator test. That test is fine. We'll turn that off. Okay, Christy is out doing her walk around. One of the most important things to get done is get the fuel on board this aircraft because we can't fuel with passengers aboard, so we want to do that right away. Let's link to SimBrief to get our flight data. King Shaka Airport to Cape Town. There's the time and route. Flight 43, Airbus A320neo. 10.09 millibars pressure at fail at uh, King Shaka. That's a little low pressure. Uh, watch out for weather trending poorly. Winds from 050, that's from the northeast, at 8 knots. If we leave from runway 060, we're going to have a slight quartering headwind off of our left nose at 8 knots. Temperature 28.23. The further these numbers are apart, the better. Uh, that's indicative of where the cloud layer will be. As these numbers move closer to each other, the cloud layer will diminish. And when these numbers meet, you'll often have ground fog or very low clouds. Okay, on landing, this is current conditions. This is three hours from now because this is current weather and we won't be there for three hours. I'm back. No issues on the walk around. This is okay. likely to change. She did a quick walk around. Uh, pressure, 1014 millibars. Wind, 330. If we land at runway one as we're planning, that means our uh, wind will be off our quartering headwind, uh, off of our nose to the left. Uh, off of our left nose at 10 knots and temperature dew point spread is even a little bit better on landing so that's good let's go to our operational flight plan number I want right now is my fuel number block fuel 111 or 11 159 11 159 so we want to move this up to 11159 or as close as we can get but make sure you go over what you need so 11237 is as close and going over it's going to take two minutes to fuel we'll push that fuel button other information we're going to want from this flight plan is our top of climb winds flight level 360 at uh, winds are 160, that's from basically the south. So we're going to have a quartering headwind for most of our flight. Since we're flying, the wind's going to be coming from 160 from this direction. So it's going to be pretty much a wind off of our left side. Almost a, almost a straight on uh, crosswind from 160 at... Uh, 21 knots, I believe that is. Let's take a look. Yes, 160, 21 knots. Isotope deviation of positive 9. We want to know our ramp weight, 71, 178. And I'll show you why that is. Let's go back to our fuel page. 71, 178. We'll want to remember that number. 71, 178. You can watch the fueling going on, but it's almost kind of like watching paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a minute left. That's not, that's not too long to wait. Especially for something as important as fuel. We're getting there. Tell you what, while you're doing that, let's see if I can't. Uh... Oh, that's there's what I want. Okay, runway heading is zero six zero based on our runway. Hi, the security and safety check are all done. 
Are we good to start boarding? Yes, you can start boarding. Well, Thanks. I said yes, but it really depends on whether the fueling is done. I'm going to trust that the... Oh, we were done. Okay, fueling is completed. Thankfully, we got the fuel in before the passengers started to board. Let's go to the flight plan. What was that number we wanted? Uh, 70 ramp uh, weight. 71,178. Now, here's where we're going to be loading the aircraft in. And we want 71,178 in this number right down here for max takeoff weight. We don't want to go over as close as we can without going over. 71,178. So 71,045 is as close as we can get without going over. So that's our load. Let's get to our flight management computer. Go to the Atsu menu, then the company menu. We'll do an initialization and we'll draw in the information from our dispatch office. Here in our case, same brief. Fail to fact, flight number 43. 152 is our in route time. Fuel on board is 11.2. So let's go to the second page, which is filled out when we land. Uh, this is filled out when we land. What the flight time was, who the landing pilot was, did we use uh, auto land, time in, time out. So that's the purpose of that. Let's go back to the company menu. We'll do a weather request for our departure airport. And we'll do one for our arrival air. Oops, arrival airport is uh, Cape Town. And we did have an alternate. Don't remember what that alternate was. It's uh, FXMM, Foxtrot X Ray Mike Mike. METAR's current weather. We'll send a request for that. We'll also send a request for TAF, Terminal Aerodrome Forecast, which is forecasted weather, and we'll send a request for that. Back to the company menu. We'll do a weight and balance. Block fuel, 11.2. And we'll, I think, if it doesn't matter, push that because we've already got it entered in. We don't need to push the load button because we've already loaded the aircraft with fuel. We can uh, request the breakdown. This is the breakdown of where our car, our uh, payload is, no cargo, and we'll start. And you can see those passengers slowly making their way to their seats. Go to the flight management computer portion. A32200 with Leap 1A engines. We have a current database. Our air act cycle is current. We'll go to the data, aircraft status. That's what we see. Initialization. Get our numbers from all over the data link. Fail to fact, flight number 43. There's our alternate, very low cost index today. We'll make sure IRS is aligning on the GPS. They're aligned on all three GPSs and they are identical. That's good. We'll put in our top of climb winds. Do you remember what they were? I don't remember. So let's get those winds. <laughs> Top of climb winds, 160 at 21 at flight 360. Okay, 160 degrees at 21 knots, and that's at flight level 360. Top of climb. And that'll be enough wind. We don't need more wind than that. Let's go to our flight plan page. Okay, runway six. And we want to use the Tubin 2B1A departure. And it will insert that. And then 
You don't really need to put in the arrival information yet, you can, because of course that can easily change in flight. But since we have our initial arrival information, I'll go ahead and enter it in. You can always change it on the fly. Runway one, and we want the Gete one arrival, and insert that. No discontinuities. Perfect. Let's go to our performance page. Flex temp is calculated today at 56 degrees. We're going to be using a flap setting of 2 with a trim of 0, 0.0 in the down. Or you could say 0, 0.0 up. It doesn't matter. Um, I don't know what the transition altitude in Africa is. I'm going to leave it at 10,000 feet, but uh, I just don't know what that is. V2, 146, that's a rather high speed. 142 on the rotate and 141 on the V1. Now I want to take that 146 and I want to put that up here in the speed. Oops. Got a little carried away there. 146. And this should still be at 060. Get our ATIS automated terminal information Kim system. Shaka international information Foxtrot. Fifteen zero Zulu hint Sare one one the bear at eight knots. Visibility quick miller three percent cadered. Temperature twenty seven del point twenty three. He rent Q and I cheese one zero zero niner. Arriving and departing in Y zero six. Kim Shaka International Information Foxtrot. 15 0 Zulu Hint Sare 1 1 the Ver at 8 Knots. Visibility Quech Miller. 3 percent Cadered. Temperature 27. Del Point 23. He rent Q and I cheese 1 0 0 Niner. Arriving and departing in Y 06. Kim Shaka International Information Foxtrot. Kim Shaka International Info. Okay, we got our Q and H of 1009. We verified our runway of 06. We learned that there's no inclement weather. So let's get a clearance. King Shaka Ground. Clipper 43, ready to copy. Clipper 43, we don't have a flight plan on file for you. Well, that's not good. Dispatch ought to be filing my flight plans. Let's do that again. King Chaka Ground, Clipper 4 Tree, ready to copy. Clipper 4 Tree is cleared to Foxtrot Alpha Charlie Tango. Fly the 2B1 A departure with the tubing transition, then as filed. Expect departure runway 06. Climb to 4,000 feet via the departure. Expect higher clearances two minutes after departure. Squawk 5225. Clipper 43 is cleared to Foxtrot Alpha Charlie Tango. Fly the 2B1A departure with the tubing transition, then as filed. Climb to 4,000 feet via the departure. Expect higher clearances two minutes after departure. Squawk 5225. Clipper 43 read back correct. QNH is 1009 let us know when you're ready for pushback. QNH is 1009 at Clipper 43. I'm going to move the transponder into the TA position or traffic advisory position. We're going to hold off on the TARA or traffic advisory and resolution 
until after we're pushed away from the gate because those emissions can be harmful to ground personnel. We're also going to move this into the auto position up here at the top. We're going to hold off on the progressive wind shear system for the same reason. We'll turn that on after we pushed away from the gate. Um, that is looking pretty good. Hey, first officer, are you in the mood to run a checklist? Before start checklist. Cockpit prep. Cockpit prep is completed. 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 Gear pins and covers. Removed. Removed. Signs. Now you're not gonna you're not gonna say it's done, but the signs are good. So cockpit prep completed. Gear pins and covers removed. Signs are on and auto, but you're you're gonna say they're not. On and auto. Are you sure about that? Adiers. Adiers is to nav. Nav. Fuel quantity. One, one, two, two, zero. Kilograms. Set. Takeoff data. Set. Barrel ref. One, zero, zero, nine. Set. One, zero, zero, nine. Set. Down to the line. Wonderful. I, I think, actually, there is one portion of the, uh, of the, uh, computer that I may have missed here. Let's go to performance. Can I do performance initialization? Yep, this is what I missed. Zero fuel weight, zero fuel center of gravity. We'll enter that in. I reminded me when she said the fuel quantity that we hadn't put in the fuel quantity. 11.2 is what we calculated. And we'll go over to the next page. And that's all good. I think I just want to... Uh, okay. So now that's taken care of. Let's talk to our ground crew. Make sure they're they're ready to go. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead, flat deck. Confirm all ground checks complete. We're cleared to pressurize the hydraulics. All set check is completed. All doors and panels are closed. No issues found. You can pressurize the hydraulics anytime now. On the left. Wonderful. Let's welcome these fine folks aboard. Good day, ladies and gentlemen from the flight deck. This is the captain speaking. On behalf of the entire flight crew and myself, I'd like to welcome you aboard today's flight. Our flight attendants are there for your comfort, but more importantly for your safety, so please give them a few minutes of your undivided attention while they go over the safety features of this aircraft. Once the boarding process is complete, we'll get the cabin door closed and push off the gate for an on-time departure. In the meantime, please sit back, relax, enjoy the ride, welcome aboard. See if we can't get that tug attached. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead, flight deck. We will be ready shortly. Understood. Let's get on APU. Let's do a fire test on engine number one. Fire test on engine number two. We'll get the fuel pumps turned on. We will get the crew oxygen supply on. We'll turn on the beacon light. APU master. APU bleed and start APU. And while that's starting, we'll come down here to the APU page. We'll see the flap door is open and we can observe the N, N1, basically N. <laughs> Kicking up. We'll get ourselves some bleed pressure to start the engines, but more importantly, we'll get ourselves some electrical power so we can come off of ground power. We have electrical and we have bleed. Let's take a look. Our engines are not running. Bleed air is available from the APU. We are venting to the outside because our cabin door is open. No vertical speed pressure change. Cabin altitude is the same as ground altitude. Electrical power. APU is providing electrical power. We do have external power available. We are not getting power from the generators, from the engines. 
Hydraulics are not pressurized yet, although we have been given the go-ahead to pressurize the hydraulics by the ground crew. Fuel pumps are on. We are loaded on the wingtips. We're almost loaded on the main tanks and we have nothing in the center line. We have no fuel flow to the engines. APU is running. Ladies Air and gentlemen, welcome on board today. As you locate your assigned seats, please place your smaller items under the seat in front of you to provide more room for larger items in our overhead compartments. If you need assistance, contact a flight attendant. If you are unable to accommodate any item in the cabin, please bring it to the boarding door and we will check it for you. Also review the safety instruction card in your seat pocket. If you are seated at an exit seat, also review the exit seating criteria. Temperature is 24. That's a little bit on the warm side, but it's okay. Doors are showing as closed. I thought she was still boarding for a little while. Wheel temperatures are fine. Flight controls have no hydraulics on them. So, no, you can't test the flight controls if there are no hydraulics on them. What happened was I made a mistake when I went outside and I hooked the tug that automatically pulled the jet bridge and pulled the electrical uh, connection. So I should have held off on connecting the tug. That was my mistake. So the jet bridge should really still be attached. We, we can disconnect the electrical connection. those last few passengers aboard. Go to the plan mode and expand the range and what we're looking for is any breaks in our flight. There's our flight from King Chaka to Cape Town. I don't see any breaks in the routing. No discontinuities on the routing. So we can go out of plan mode. And I'm going to move this into the uh, 40 knot range. Let's come over here and brief the, uh, brief the taxi and brief the departure. So we're at FALE Airport. And taxi. We're at gate number 11. So basically, we are here at gate number 11. Right there, gate 11. We're going to, going to runway 6, so we'll get a pushback off of 11. Left turn down the, the bowling alley and turn on taxi road taxi Hey guys, AC. are we clear to close? Yes. Thanks. Let me know if you need anything. Okay. She's going to lock up taxiway C to runway 6 for our departure. Let's do our departure, which is the tube in 1A. Okay, this is really kind of hard to read here. But basically, we're going to be departing runway 6 to Lee 015. We'll be making a left turn for 12.9 miles to Lee 1G2, and then a left turn at 248 degrees, that's for 30 miles, to LE1CF, and then 21 miles to Tubin, and then continue on our routing. 7,000 feet between LE1G and LE1C, and 8,000 feet between LE1CF and Tubin. So, left turn, left turn. Of course, this will all be in the computer. But that's our taxi brief and our departure brief. Let's lock the cabin door. Lock, lock the cabin. Uh, uh, lock the uh, flight. Lock the flight deck door. Ah, gotta find that flight deck door. Where's the flight deck door? 
There we go. Okay, lock the plate deck door. She's closed up. We should have the jet bridge pulled and the door closed. King Shaka ground. Clipper for a tree. Request pushback and engine start. Clipper 43 pushback and engine start approved. Pushback and engine start approved. Clipper 43. Let's do the below the line checklist. Below the line. Windows and doors. Closed. Closed. Beacon. On. Thrust levers. Idle. Parking brake. On. Before start, checklist complete. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead, flight deck. We are ready for pushback and engine start. Understood. Release the parking brakes, please. Parking brakes released. Pushing back. Once we're clear of obstacles, he'll give us the go ahead. All ground equipment is clear. You can start the engines at your discretion. Starting engine two. Starting engine one. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board our flight today. This is the lead flight attendant speaking. Please direct your attention to the cabin crew for important safety information. There is an instruction card in your seat pocket that illustrates the safety equipment on this aircraft. Regulations require compliance with this information as well as all crew instructions, lighted information signs, and posted placards. Fasten your seat belt by inserting the metal tip into the buckle. Tighten by pulling on the belt. To release your seat belt, lift the metal flap on the buckle. It is our policy that you keep your seat belt fastened at all times while seated. Doors are clearly marked with exit signs and instructions for door operation. Each door is equipped with an escape slide. Locate the exit nearest you. The nearest exit may be behind you. In an emergency, lights will illuminate the aisle. The cabin is pressurized. If there is a loss of cabin pressure, a panel will open and oxygen masks will appear. Remain seated with your seatbelt fastened and pull a mask toward you to start the flow of oxygen. Oxygen will be flowing to the mask even though the bag may not inflate. Cover your nose and mouth with the mask. Place the elastic band around your head and tighten by pulling on the ends. Secure your own mask before assisting Engines others. Engines are stable. Let's your seat bottom cushion may be used as a flotation mode. device. Pull up and remove the cushion. Upon exiting the aircraft, place your arms around the cushion Turn and hold the onto the straps located Turn off on the, the back. ABU. This is a non-smoking flight. Smoking is not permitted in the cabin or lavatory. Cabin lights will now be turned off. Reading light buttons are located above your seat. Thank you for your attention. I'm going to uh, ah. ah, where is that button? There we go. I'm going to turn on the progressive wind shear system. I'm going to move the transponder into the TARA mode. First officer has already armed the spoilers and she moved the flaps into the number two detent. Those are two things you don't want to do at the gate because they can injure ground personnel. She waited until we were pushed from the gate and then she put the flaps down to two and she armed the speed brakes just as she should have. Ooh, what's going on here? Oh, goodness. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my gosh. Well, we're obviously done with the we're obviously done with the uh, with the push. <laughs> 
The push is complete. Please set the brakes. You might be in trouble here. Parking brakes set. Understood. Okay, the turbo is disconnected and the pin is out and the equipment is clear. Thanks, and you can disconnect and go to hand signals. Thanks, have a good flight and uh, we'll see you later. I'm gonna see if I can move out of this predicament. Might not be able to. Pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> it's rather embarrassing. <laughs> Ooh, okay. After start checklist. Are you ready, Christy? After start checklist. Anti ice. Anti ice is not needed. Off. E cam status. E cam status is uh, checked. Checked. Pitch trim. 26% set. Rudder trim. Zero. After start checklist complete. Let's uh, take off auto brake to max. We want to ding the cabin. Let them know that they all need to be seated. And we're testing configuration. Should be all green. Okay, all Flight green. Test, please prepare for takeoff. Let's do a flight control check. We have hydraulics, we have pressure. You can tell by all the green. Go to the let's go to the hydraulic screen. There's the hydraulic screen, all three systems, green, blue, and yellow are pressurized. Flight control check. Oh, let's uh, flight control check. Ready. Full down. Full up. Neutral. Full right. Full left. Neutral. Rudder. Full right. Full left. Neutral. Your turn. Now she's going to go through the same control check on her side. Full right. Full left. Neutral. Rudder. She didn't check the rudder. Okay, well, such is life. King Shaka Ground. Clipper for a tree. Request taxi, runway 6. Clipper 43, taxi to runway 06. Taxi to runway 06, Clipper 43. Let's check the left side. Clear left side. Clear right side. And parking brake off. Let's brake do a brake check. check. Pressure zero. Brake check. Before takeoff checklist. Flight controls. Checked. Checked. Flight instruments. Checked. Checked. Briefing. Confirmed. Flap setting. Config 2. Config 2. V1. VR. V2. Flex temp. V1. 1. 4. 1. VR. 1. 4. 2. V2. 1. 4. 6. Flex temp. 5. 6. Degrees. V1. 1. 1. 4. 1. VR. 1. 4. 2. V2. 1. 4. 6. Flex temp. 4. 3. Contact tower on 118 decimal 4. 5. Have a nice flight. Tower on 118 decimal 4. 5. Clipper 4. 3.
King Shaka Tower, Clipper Ford Tree, ready for departure, runway 6. Clipper 4 3 winds are 115 at 8 knots cleared for takeoff, runway 06. Cleared for takeoff, runway 06, Clipper 4 3. Clipper 4 3 climb and maintain flight level 120. Climb and maintain flight level 120, Clipper 4 3. Approach path clear of traffic. Landing lights on, strobe lights on, clock is started. Approach path is clear. Let's get on the runway while we can. Set. Ecam memo. Approaching. Take off. No blue. Zero. Down to the line. Six. Request takeoff clearance. Tower. Alaska. Four. Three. Ready for departure. Cleared for departure. Alaska. Four. Three. I should let her. I shouldn't let her. I should not have let her do that. Below the line. Take off runway. Approaching. Zero. Confirmed. Six. Confirmed. Cabin crew. Advised. TCAS. T A R A. Engine mode selector. Normal. Packs. Packs are on. Before takeoff checklist complete. Takeoff. Check. Let's go into flex on runway Four. zero six. Thrust set. Uh, flex mode is not working, apparently. One hundred knots. Checked. V1. Rotate. Rotate. Positive rate. Man flex 5, 6. SRS runway, auto thrust blue. Check. Positive climb. Runway track. Check. Gear up. Flaps 1. Speed check. Flaps 1. Flap 0. Check speed. Gear up. Flap zero. Check speed. Flap zero. Check speed. Oh, you're going to be so picky about that. Autopilot on. AP one. Check. Flap zero. Speed check. Get out, star. Check. Flap zero. Clipper four three contact Johannesburg East Center on one one nine decimal nine. Have a good afternoon. Center on one one nine decimal nine. Clipper four three. Nah. Check. Center Clipper four three climbing to flight level one two zero. Clipper four three. Vertical Mudas speed. Double. Check. Radar contact. Other than not being able to put my thrust levers in the climb mode, as they should be, the lever to climb, we're looking pretty good. I don't know what's going on with the, uh, with the thrust lever settings. After takeoff, climb checklist. Landing gear. Up. Flaps. Clipper for this low to 250 knots or less. Buku Clipper 4 3.
Packs are on. Down to the line. Speed. Check. Speed. Check. River for the expedite speed reduction to 250 knots. Wilco Clipper 43. Remember, we set transition altitude to 10,000 feet. River for the climb and maintain flight level 200. Climb and maintain flight level 200, Clipper 43. You can see our left quartering headwind, as we predicted we would have. 9,700 feet on the altitude, and then once we're up to altitude, we should remember we should be getting just a direct crosswind. There's transition, let's flip it over to standard. Set standard. Standard cross check, passing flight level one, zero, six. Now. Checked. Okay, the next command is clear rad nav is radio frequencies. We didn't use any radio frequencies, so I'm gonna go through this, but there won't be anything to clear. Clear rad nav. Okay. We can do the below the line check. Below the line. Barrel breath. Standard set. Standard set. After takeoff climb checklist complete. We are gonna give control to our first officer. And I'm going to, at this point, you would set up for the approach, but we're a long way from that. So we're just going to let the first officer fly for a while. And meanwhile, I'm going to pause the recording and do the in route portion without you. We'll meet you when it's time to set up for the descent. Have a nice pause. Should be back instantaneously in your eyes. Well, folks, welcome back. I brought you back just a bit early. Uh, we've been flying now for about an hour and a half without you. And I brought you back because I'll show you what's going on. We are uh, progressing rather well. You can see here's our entirety where the little yellow airplane here. And the green arrow is top of descent. And sometime before top of descent, we're going to be given our uh, landing instructions. Right now, we're on track for runway one. So there's... what it would look like tentatively. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we could fly the procedure, but more than likely when we get close to 
the Cape Town Airport will start getting vectors toward runway one, as you would in most of the time in real life. You wouldn't be allowed to fly the actual procedure unless you were the only plane in the sky and you actually did have some IMC instrument meteorological conditions. So we are still in the cruise, doing 429 knots ground speed, 459 knots airspeed. We have a quartering headwind at 30 knots, 31 knots. Our top of descent is right after Gadnu in 16, 66 miles. So right in this area is when we should start getting our uh, our uh, arrival information. First officer is still flying. Once we get our arrival information, I'll make sure the flight computer is set up. see we do have some targets on radar some other aircraft in the sky none of them are conflicting with us Let's see if we can't listen to the ATIS from National information gone. Fires Dean Zero Zulu hints are at three. We've a boy that eight knots. 
Disability a chwech milledd. 3,600 fel cloed. Demperti rai 20 fibe, del point 12. I rent Q, and I cheese 1013. Are you going to depart in Renoir 01? Cape Town International Information Goal. Voyage Dean 00 Zulu hints are 3 vive boy that eight knots. Visibility quake miller. 3600 bell cloid. Demperti rai 20 vive, del point 12. I rent Q, and I cheese 1013. Are you going to depart in Renoir 01? Cape Town International Information Goal. Voyage Dean 00 Zulu hints are 3 vive boy that eight knots. Visibility Chwech Miller 3,600 Bell Cloyd Demperity Rai 20 Viva Del Point 12 Hirent Q and I Chis 1013 Arriving and Departing Renoir 0 Center Clipper 4-3 at Flight Level 360 Clipper Voir 3 Radar Contact that Welch accent was a bit hard for me to understand. Cape Town International Information Golf. 14 zero Zulu winds are 354 at 8 knots. Visibility 6 miles. 3,600 few clouds. Temperature 25, dew point 12. Current Q and H is 1013. Arriving and departing runway 01. Cape Town International Information Golf. 14 zero Zulu winds are 354 at 8 knots. Visibility 6 miles. 3,600 few clouds. Temperature 25, dew point 12. Current Q and H is 1013. Arriving and departing runway 01. Cape Town International Information Golf. 14 zero Zulu winds are 354 at 8 knots. Visibility 6 miles. 3,600 few clouds. Temperature 25, dew point 12. Current Q and H is 1013. Arriving and departing runway 01. Cape Town International Information Golf. 14 zero Zulu winds are 354 at 8 knots. Visibility 6 miles. 3,600 few clouds. Temperature 25, dew point 12. Current Q and H is 1013. Arriving and. Okay, we got the Q and H. Temperature. Center clip of 4 winds. At flight level 360. And. 200 on the radar altimeter for our decision height. After Esrik clear at Berecht Getting. Expect the Gita 1 Alpha arrival with the Getting transition for the ILS approach to runway 01 after Esrik clear direct Getting Clipper 43. Okay, we just got our clearance. That's exactly what we expected. The Getting 1 Alpha arrival, Getting transition, ILS to runway 1. That's exactly what we asked for, and that's exactly what we got. And as, you, as I mentioned, it would probably come just before top of descent. You can see that there's getting and there's top of descent. I think I'll take control of the aircraft. You have control. I have control. I have control. You have control. Approach checklist. Briefing. Oh, we didn't do a briefing, did we? Okay. Let's go to... Let's get a briefing done. Okay. Cape Town International, we'll do a star, and we're on the Getting 1 
arrival. Boy, this is really hard to read. So, well, here's getting the start of the procedure. 10 miles to SLP, 31 miles. And then uh, intercept CTV radio 120 inbound to DME 9 miles. CTV turn left 190 to track for radar. Vector 190 radar vectors. Okay, so track the VOR we'll have on our routing and then 190 to radar vectors to runway one that is the procedure and how about a taxi we'll be coming in runway one Coming in from the south to the north, there's a high speed ramp and we'll aim for gate number 9 or 10. Gate number 9 or 10 at the end of the high speed. So that is our oh approach, ILS to runway 1. Clip the 43 descent across Getan at flight level 220, then descend via the Gator 1 Alpha arrival with the Getan transition to 2000 feet QNH is 1013 at Cape Town International. We'll cross Getan at flight level 220, then descend via the Gator 1 Alpha arrival with the Getan transition to 2000 feet QNH is 1013 Clipper 43. There's our descent. Rust idle. Check. Descent. Check. 110.3 is our ILS frequency. 009 on the radio. It is a, um, what is the three degree? It's a three degree glide slope, standard glide slope. So no surprises on the ILS. 1103 is our frequency. There we go. It's already in there, actually. Yeah, we don't need to put it in. It's already here. Okay. I was actually kind of thought that anyway. Confirmed. E cam status. Checked. Seat belts. On. Barrel ref. One, zero, one, three, set. One, zero, one, three, set. Minimum. Two, zero, zero, set. Two, zero, zero, set. Engine mode selector. Normal. Approach checklist complete.
Ladies and gentlemen, once again from the flight deck, this is the captain speaking. We're going to begin our initial descent here momentarily. At this time, I'm going to turn the seatbelt sign back on, so please return your seats and keep your seatbelt securely fastened until the aircraft has come to a stop at the gate and the seatbelt sign has been turned off. It's been our pleasure having you on board for today's flight, and we hope to see you back on a future flight again real soon. Flight attendants, please prepare the cabin for arrival. And we've been cleared down to 2,000 feet. starting to get a fair amount of traffic in our vicinity. Wouldn't be surprised if we got some traffic calls for these other aircraft. And even though we're on the procedure, now that we're well into the descent, I would not be surprised if we got some victory. I'm going to turn on the terrain radar. slow our descent a little bit. We're at 2,300 feet per minute. Speed. Check. Vertical oh. speed. Check. Let's, let's make that 1,400 feet per minute. Actually, uh, yeah, 1,400 feet per minute. That would be good. Shallow out. Shallow out our descent a little bit. The controller is expecting us, remember when we put in our parameters, the controller is expecting us to descend at 1,500 feet per minute, climb and descent. So that descent rate is what determined where that top of climb would be. Nine miles to Ezruk, and then after Ezruk, we'll be at Getten, which is the start of our procedure. Ten thousand feet is our transition altitude. It's also the altitude where we want to be below two hundred and fifty knot airspeed.
Cabin crew, prepare for arrival. At 10,000 feet, we have a checklist of items to accomplish. Landing lights on, seatbelt signs on, landing system as required. Constraints on and terrain on the navigational display. So we got to the terrain radar is on and we can go into landing system. I'll go ahead and put it on the first officer's side as well. And that will help us pick up the ILS as soon as we're able. ahead and turn on the landing lights. Seatbelt sign is on. A couple of dings on the cabin. A couple of dings for the attendants. In, the, in North America, we would be crossing transition altitude now. But we still have 8,000 feet to go here. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be arriving at our destination shortly. If you are making a connection to another flight, Please see the customer service agent meeting this flight or video monitors inside the terminal for connecting gate information. For your continued safety, flight attendants will now walk through the cabin to secure it for landing. We'll be collecting all service items, newspapers, and any other items you wish to discard or may not be taking off the aircraft with you. Also in preparation for landing, please turn off all electronic devices, stow these devices, and then all other carry-on items. Please use caution when opening overhead bins as items may have shifted during our flight. Please stow your tray tables and return your seats to their upright position and check the security of your seat belts. We will be landing shortly. Thank you. When we get to about 13,000 feet, I will reduce our speed down to about 240 knots. Make sure we're under that speed limit. Also at 10,000 feet, we go into what's called sterile cockpit. Where we try to eliminate unnecessary conversation, conversation not related to the task at hand. ATC voices. Look at clipper four three. Let's bring our speed down to two hundred and forty knots. Let me see if I can get that voice back. That was uh, 
Is that the approach controller? This is approach on one two zero desk. This is approach clipper four three descending to two thousand feet. Yeah, that's a clipper for the good evening. Radar contact. Continue descent via the get one alpha arrival. For the ills approach to runway zero one at Cape Town International. Continue descent via the Gita one alpha arrival. For the ILS approach to runway zero one clipper four three. Okay, that language. Clipper. Wilco clipper four three. This is Amazon Borley, Castilian Spanish, Conchita, Standard. It will be your approach controller for the flight. Okay, the approach that controller is fine. Okay, we should be should be getting down to uh, 240 knots. We're still going too fast. Gotta get out of uh, controlled mode and into manual speed mode. 240 knots. There we go. And we'll cut back on our power a little bit. Clipper for this low to 250 knots or less. We just picked up our. In the lower left corner, you can see we picked up our ILS. Here comes 10,000 feet. Transition. One zero zero nine set. One zero zero nine set. Passing one zero thousand zero hundred. Now checked. Altimeter setting. Clipper for this low to 250 knots or less. Wilco Clipper 43. I'm going to give us one notch of flaps. Wonder, I'm not sure what control works that way. Altimeter setting. Might need a little speed break as well. Get us within the flap operating range. Altimeter setting. One zero one three is the current altimeter. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Well, we'll put it right there. Okay, we're down below. Get rid of the speed brakes now. Let's add in another notch of flaps. Probably gonna hear that same alarm. There's two. Some more speed brake to get us down.
Clipper for the Dead Left Heading 26 Vectors to the Hills Approach for Runway 01 at Cape Town International. Heading 236 Vectors to the ILS Approach for Runway 01 Clipper 43. We were expecting vectors and we got vectors. 236. Get our speed down to 190. Actually, let's bring us down to 160. should be getting a right turn onto base and a right turn onto final. You can see our ILS uh, carrots have come in on our primary display. You can also see the terrain radar is effectively monitoring the terrain. We're coming upon a glide slope intercept, but we're not going to intercept yet. Probably going to end up intercepting it from below, which is fine. Seven hundred feet to our target altitude. Give us just a little bit more thrust. Radar altimeter alive. Check. Speed. Check. Get out star. Check. Throttle is really touchy. Oh, check. Throttle is really touchy not having the uh, the detents. Clipper for the turn right heading to Oninere. Heading two nine eight Clipper four three. Two nine or eight is what the lady wants. Clipper for Tregle Aret for Ilstor Runway Zero One Free Heading DC Seven to Intercept Final. Cleared for ILS approach to Runway Zero One Fly Heading Three Three Seven Clipper Four Three. 
337 for the intercept. Go to localizer. I'm going to turn on the second autopilot. Oh, uh, only takes one for right now. How about the approach? Lokestar. Check. We have two autopilots and we have our approach. I have the runway environment. You can see we're lined up on localizer we are low on the glide slope approaching the glide slope at 2,000 feet from below so we'll have glide slope capture at 2,000 feet look check and let's plan on an auto landing today we have the glide slope I oh, was sorry we locked to the Localizer, but we don't have to glide slope yet. Liverpool DQNH is 101 the ad cap at town international contact tower on 118 decimal 1. Enjoy your evening. QNH is 1013 tower on 118 decimal 1 clipper 43. Tower getting out. Tower clipper 43 inbound for ILS approach runway 01. 018. Clipper 43, good evening. Radar contact. Continue ILS to runway 01 call when established on final. Continue ILS to runway 01 will call when established on final clipper 43. Uh, Cape Town Tower, clipper 43 on final. Clipper 43 winds are 354 at 8 knots clear to land runway 01. Clear to land runway 01, Clipper 43. We have our landing clearance. We are capturing the glide slope. Glide slope. Check. We are in a Cat 3 dual autopilot. Decision height 200 feet, AGL. And we are set up for an auto land. I'm going to turn the train radar off. Approaching zero one, one. Uh, check. The RAS system is working. You can hear that approaching runway zero one. That's the RAS system. Auto brakes set to medium. Speed brake is armed 500 too low terrain too low terrain land check too low terrain too low terrain 100 above check too low terrain too low terrain too low terrain don't know why it's too doing low that terrain too low terrain. Too low terrain. Flare. Check. Rust idle. Check. 20. 10. Retard. Roll out. Check. Flipper 43A. Spoilers. Runway. Reverse green. Decel. <laughs> 70 knots. Manual flight. Check. Autopilot off. Start the APU. Landing lights off. Strobes off. 
what is this aircraft sitting here on the ramp for? Clear of the active, Clipper 4-3. Aircraft calling tower say again with your call sign. Cape Town Tower, Clipper 4-3, clear of the active runway. Clipper 4-3, contact ground on 121 decimal niner. Have a good evening. Ground on 121 decimal niner, Clipper 4-3. Well, I mentioned we were aiming for stand 10 or 11, and that's exactly where I want to put us, right here at 11. Thank you, good day. Yes, sir. After landing checklist. Flaps. Flaps retracted. Retracted. Spoilers. Spoilers are retracted. Disarmed. Are you sure about that? APU. Yeah, spoilers are... Oh, spoilers are disarmed. There we go. APU is started. Start. Radar. Radar is off. Progressive wind shear system is off. Transponder to TA mode. Off. Predictive wind shear system. Off. Off. After landing checklist. Complete. Okay, let's kill the uh, kill the left engine, Ladies the number and gentlemen, one engine. This is the conclusion of our flight. Please remain seated with your seatbelts fastened until the captain has oh. turned off the seatbelt sign and the aircraft is parked safely at the gate. This will be your indication it is safe to move about seat the cabin, gather your belongings, and disembark. We'd like to thank you for flying with us today. We appreciate your business and hope to see you again on a future flight. And let's get the jet bridge attached. This is also default scenery here in Cape Town. Taxi light off. We light off. Parking checklist. APU bleed. APU bleed can come off. <coughs> On. Are you sure about that? Engines. Oh. Off. Seat belts. Off. Exterior lights. Off. Are you sure about that? Fuel pumps. Off. Parking brake and chocks. Parking brake is on, chocks are on. On. Parking checklist complete. Securing the aircraft checklist. Adir's. Adir's system can be turned off. Off and off. Off. Oxygen. Oxygen can go to crew supply off. Off. APU bleed. APU bleed can go to off. Off. Emergency exit light. Emergency exit lights can come off. 
off. Are you sure about that? Signs. There we go. Off. APU and battery. APU off and battery off. Off. Securing the aircraft checklist complete. Thank you for joining me today. We'll see you next time.